Subscribe now. There were so many times during my divorce, that was the only thing I could do. And literally, like we talked about earlier, my brain was like marinating in stress hormones and I couldn't think. And I think I can't live in this fear one more second. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to stay tuned. Guess what? I bet you can hear me now. I can. Uh, you know what? I have no idea when technical difficulties happening. And, happen. um, I'm having it and I'm enjoying myself. And the next thing I know, I can't hear you. Ah. So I'm not going to even consider that important to me because I can hear you now. Okay, good. I can hear you too. So it's kind of like dealing with a narcissist. Sometimes you just ignore what they're doing because it's not important. Absolutely. And th- what just happened toward the end when I was totally listening to you is what I just went through. But um, we were talking about uh, <laughs> presentation. <laughs> presentation. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was I was thinking to myself. I don't think I should say the word. Maybe the sound will go out again. <laughs> so, yeah. So presentation, presentation, not representation. No, not representation, which we can also talk about. But we can. No. Yes. No. So, I just want to let's talk about presentation. Go ahead. Presentation is just basically how you present what your image is, what people think of you, right? Anyone can that comes I, in can your I tell sphere, you something? Can I tell you something? Tell me. You're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> Why, thank you. This is almost like it's a Friday where I'm super goofy. I'm tempted to do that right now it because I'm having like so Friday. much fun. Everyone and I'm like, it, does. it feels like a Friday to me. I don't know why. <laughs> All right. Let me be serious. Go ahead, okay. Jackie. You were saying. Oh, we need, oh, my gosh. We need some levity and some <laughs> comedic <laughs> breaks. You have to when you're in this. You yeah. have to. You need to laugh. You for you, for sure. You need to. Yes, yes, yes. I I find I find ways to laugh. I have to. Um, I would be crying all the time. I would yeah, seriously. I would really be so sad with some of the stuff. Just doing this, I hear sad stories so much. Yeah. I just I have to take a break. It's yeah. like I can't do another show right now. This is like crazy. These people are crazy. But I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, you for know, that therapy. I would say my probably um, weak spot as a coach is that I get so mad at your ex too. That I have to like walk away. I'll read an email like, or touch a set and I'm like, oh, this guy. Like, and then I'm, like, like I'm not, I wasn't even coach. married to him and he irritates me. You're supposed to be the coach. You're to be the okay, so, wait. Now it's kind of like, it's kind of like the 15 year old question I asked you. Now I want to ask Have you ever lost it uh, in front of a client uh, because you were upset with the guy, dude? Um, well, the extent of my losing it would be like I, I we I'd let us go down the path for a couple of minutes. Like, is he kidding? Like what's he think that we're gonna like you're gonna blah 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 da 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 I mean are you that's absolutely that's the Jackie ridiculous. I want to see. Wait, that's the Jackie absolutely I want to see absolutely ridiculous. And then I'm like, okay, let's make a plan. Let's make a plan. But I'm like this guy and they're like, are you sure that he's not I'm like he's an idiot. No, he's not gonna get away with this. He's an idiot. Wait, wait, so, wait, 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 wait. So <laughs> Jay Mills in the house. Jay Mill, Coach yes. Jay Mill in the house. Yes. Down. I <laughs> like, get some. Yeah. You go like, you go like mama, mama, get... mama said, knock you out. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to knock. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So that's me. Back... That's me losing it. Yeah. That's you. That's you losing it. That's I would love to see it. that. Seriously, I would love it. to see you have at yeah. it. Your eyes get big. you will be like, what? He's it's a... like, we're going to take him down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, talking like John Wayne or. <laughs> Clint Eastwood, you can keep Clint Eastwood all of a sudden. All right, uh, go ahead. So, oh, uh, oh. whatever we were talking about was important. All right. uh, it was we presentation. were talking about presentation, and okay. it is super important because, like I said, kind of, it's kind of like the one wrong move can really set you back. So, it's how, especially in custody battles where you have the judge, then all of a sudden you start getting thrown in the custody evaluator, and then someone claims that you need a psych evaluation because you're so crazy. So a psych evaluator is in your world now. And then Wait, you get seriously, ordered. Seriously? Oh, that, well, that happens? Oh, because that's well, who requests who, who puts the request in for that? The ex, the other, because you're crazy. You're so then, crazy. Wait, the, judge goes, the judge goes with that? You know, sometimes it, it can get there. Sometimes it can get there. And you know what? Wow. That's why your communication is so important. Because you don't want any evidence going, look what she writes. Even if you were fired up and you had every reason in the world to communicate that can't give him any material 
can't give them any now. Yeah. You don't want to do that. No, no. So yeah, you know, I I've seen, definitely seen cases go there. A psych evaluator comes in. Well, if I need one, then you need one. So now you need one. Now I don't like your psych evaluator. So I want to pick your psych evaluator. No, I'm picking yours. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just, it can be a three ring circus, but the point is, and also co-parenting therapists, sometimes judges will order you guys to go to, you know, co-parenting therapy. And the bottom line is, I'm, I'm sorry. I know you're hitting bottom line, a co-parenting therapist. therapist yes. For each parent? No, you go together. You, excuse me, you go to, with the person that you know is trying to smear campaign you and oh yeah, be stupid. So imagine wow. sitting in the therapy session yeah. and they start doing that. And a natural reaction would be to defend yourself. Of course. And then another accusation and more defending. And it, and pretty soon the session's over. And again, even the therapist is like just thinking in general, this couple is a mess. And it's like, no, 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 no. I wanted to be here to help figure out how to be the best parents for my kid. This person's coming at me 20. And people walk away just like, oh my gosh, another three ring circus. Yeah. But I actually kind of like these opportunities because they're opportunities. If you are ready with the words and you have a plan and you've talked mm -hmm. it through, you can have strategies to help the therapist see who the problem person is. Mm -hmm. And you can shut down their comments, keep bringing the conversation back to the kids. And after a session or two, the co-parenting therapist and other people who may have the power to report back to the court goes, okay, she keeps trying to stop the madness and talk right, about right. the kids. And sorry for all the she and he pronouns. If there are any guys on the podcast, I have male yeah, clients. Right. Right? They'll, right. they'll that, get, they'll there's get that over apology. it. There's that apology. Mm. But, and then says, and he just keeps going with the blame, the blame, the blame. But in the first scenario, you're also part of the problem. In the second scenario, we have a chance of shining a light on who the real problem person is. So, and that's that's where it, it's very important for uh, uh, the innocent party, the victim uh, of the abuse, uh, to make sure that they they remain calm. Uh, yeah. That's where you come in, really, per se, as a coach. Even it gives that that sense of uh, dignity to the moment. Yep. Because if not they're going to lose their dignity and they're going to lose, well, technically they're going to lose their court case. Yeah. Yeah. How, how does that work for you when you see a client lose their, their cool and it costs them dearly? You know, I, we have our radical acceptance talk about this is you, where you, we're you at. You really just did that. That was the next thing I, I set up that question to you did? say the next, and you just <laughs> took it. I'm looking dead at it. I deliberately asked I'm that really question. good at reading people now. I even I put in this weird pause as I tried to do it <laughs> on purpose to lead as a bridge to, I'm looking dead at radical acceptance is radical right there. Acceptance. And you just took it right well, out let's of it. segue into that then. Um, okay, go ahead. The thing that sucks, but is absolutely necessary about radical acceptance is if you've had a big setback, it, it, you have to cry about it, be scared about it, talk through it take a couple days, try to get yourself together, figure out what you need to do to, for self-care to get your mind. And then we talk about, okay, this is where we're at. This is our new starting point. Here we go. It happened. Now we learned from it. And we're going to act differently going forward or do different things. That, but this is where we're at. I need you to accept that so that we can now use your energy to, to move forward and get you somewhere in a better place. Uh I love the way you said that. I was really trying to be on my best behavior while you were talking. It was really good. I was trying not to laugh. But I get so that serious. Is, that is sometimes. like I could just see you saying that to someone and they're going like, but you don't understand. And you're like, no. You're you're like totally bringing them back in. You're like a you're like a you're like a Jedi. You're like a Jedi. You're like a divorced Jedi. That's what you, you need a t shirt that's that says that. With Yoda, I, with Yoda on it, you're like you a, know, you're like a divorce Yoda. It's funny you know? because so that you say that because sometimes like after I'm we're done like kind of profiling the the ex, we'll sort of look for Achilles heels <laughs> or things that push their buttons or whatever whatever, and I'll say okay, this is where we could use a Jedi mind trick on him, 
and get him to do this. <laughs> so uh, I say that you start to time. scare me now. You start to scare me. <laughs> you're like you're profiling people too. I remember I told you slow sipping of that cup. Please slow know, slip. Know, you you gotta we gotta I'm get more airtime of that cup. Look at that cup. You guys need to get one of those. Okay, you need to get some of that merch. That I need cup to, is yeah, cool. I need to put that on on my. Yeah, just, that cup is yeah. way cool. Yeah, it's so yeah. cool with a mic on it. Okay, uh, Tamika from Morris Therapy on the screen is agreeing with you a thousand percent. She is saying it's great when the judge orders co-parenting session and uh, custody evaluations. She says you have struck gold when that takes place. Uh, very much so with your saying as well. This is something that should not make the person afraid if they're going through a divorce. But would you say it's an opportunity? It is, if it's going to happen, let's make it an opportunity. And Morris Therapy, I don't know if you actually are a therapist, so you're probably a very she good is. one. She's been a guest knows, Okay, so. <laughs> you're a yeah. really good one that knows what's going on when, when couples like this come to you. So that's awesome that you are out there. Um, it, can, it can turn out to be not a great situation if you weren't prepared and you yeah. kind of fell into the, you know, all the traps that were laid out for you. But it can definitely be an opportunity because, yeah, these people report back to the court Lots of mm -hmm. times they give their yeah. opinions and mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for you to, you know. Well, they've seen multiple couples, so they'll be able to pretty much get a gauge uh, overall as to what they're dealing with when they see things pretty much go the way it normally goes in, in the house of a, with a narcissist. So they, they're sitting there saying, OK, this is probably what these two people are like at home. Mm -hmm. And I can see who the troublemaker is. You know, no. No. Because what is another major characteristic? Well, you know, yeah, the, they, they, they can be a chameleon, <laughs> a chameleon in the process, uh -huh. of course. Mm -hmm. Yep, charmers, the way yeah. they articulate what all these horrible things you did, you know, so it's, yeah. They, they can play the victim at the, at the drop of a hat, of yeah. course. Some of them um, are really good. By the way, just to, I just want to go back to something here that I should have said. Um, yeah, you and Tamika, would, she would do great on your show, by the way. I just want to tell you that. Just, oh, awesome. Would, Okay. Yeah, she might she might be pretty good on your show. Uh, so uh, if you guys team up, I, I can't wait to see that. Okay. Uh, I had nothing to do with it, though. So if it goes bad, I had nothing to do with it. But what I was going to say, when it comes to something that's on the screen right now, Rita is saying, shouldn't all the professionals be aware that a narc is the charming one? Well, that's like that's like having children and being aware that, you know, there's going to be one kid that may not cooperate. It's just kind of a given. Uh, so I imagine some professionals know it, but there's not a lot of professionals then that you've come in contact with that are aware that a person is a narcissist, or are they? What do you think? Do they recognize the person's a narc, or do? You know, some do and some don't. So in, in two pieces to that answer, one, that's why it's really good to make sure you vet out your attorney and your therapist to make sure they understand what you've been dealing with, what kind of abuse you've been enduring, and then what you are in for from a legal standpoint. But then if you do get professionals, that it becomes obvious that they're not getting yeah. who the charming one is. They're good at telling their story and playing the victim card. They are good. So it's, it's, they, they'll even back off the charming. And Rita, you, you know, you would hope that if they're a charmer that they would be able to see through that. But that yeah. victim card, man. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, it's, it's amazing. I, I think back to one person told me, you know, you can't count on the professionals to see that. Right. You don't know whether they're a narc or not. You don't know whether they had a bad day and slept on the couch or in the car. You know, they may be having, you know, it's just when it's your turn, you just hope for the best that you can control yourself. Yeah. As one professional told me, you can't count on the people in the court to see anything. But what you said made sense in our first uh, segment and that you touched on here, it really is up to us to make sure we're well informed and as coached as possible in these circumstances. Uh, because if not, we go in unarmed with a, a manipulator. And if they team up with somebody else that doesn't care, mm -hmm. we could be in big trouble if we're in that situation. Yeah. Family court sucks. Yeah, it I was just, trying not to say that. I was being really nice about it. <laughs> it just sucks. You said it so well. And I was try I'm trying to be diplomatic. It's, it's awful. Yeah. 
I'm that's sorry. why I, that's why I like Rita and uh, Rita has uh, been on some other shows, and I, I I empathize with situations that individuals that come on uh, the live here and other shows have talked about. You're at the mercy of other people who may not care. Well said. Technically, well, you know, it's a bad analogy or not. Is you know, it's like having children or being around a bunch of children. Some children do their homework, some don't. You know, some kids are really good at pretending they're good children and they they change clothes and go do something else. You know, everybody, you know, they can look like they care and they could totally not. Your mm -hmm. lawyer could look like he cares and he could totally not. Absolutely. We can only do what we can do and some things as one professional told me, sometimes you just have to cut your loss when you go through family court and try to do the best, get the best you can get and get out of there as soon as you can. Right. It's, and there's zero justice. There's not yeah, emotional yeah. justice. There is yeah. no financial yeah. justice. There's no winning. You, yeah, you, yeah you, there is no, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. there is no winning. Yeah, it, it, it's not built to, for the, one of the parties to win, Right. let alone sometimes even the children. It's just oh, yeah. it's just for you to get through the court so they can get to the next case. Yes. So it's you know the you're next the next 30 number. cases. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. You make a good point. Since that's the case, and literally that's the subject or the case we're talking about, I need your opinion on two things that people wrote me they wanted to hear about, and I'm okay. picking on you to do so. All right. Uh, when it comes to alienation allegations, how should a person approach that? Okay, so if you are being charged or, or, or saying that you are causing the kids to be alienated from the other parent, you're, the, you're doing the alienating, right? Mm -hmm. So safeguarding yourself from these claims is really important. And it's become the go-to, so it's become the go-to defense for the abusers. And abusers, I mean the financial abuser, emotional abuser, verbal abuser, all that other stuff in addition to possible physical, you know, other abuse. Yeah, it's become right. the go-to, and here's the reason. And, and again, I'm sorry about the girl guy thing, but there's a study out. <laughs> okay, 99.9% out. .9 of the women, women watch this show. Yeah, yeah, I okay, could good, care good, less good, if the guys good, are good, upset. Okay, good. Okay, good. Eighty-five percent of the eighty-five percent of the people that write me are men, so right. they're taken care of. Okay. okay, go ahead. So, in your marriage, in, during your relationship, you were probably the primary caretaker. Even if you were working full time, kids were coming to you. Especially if you had a spouse that was just kind of angry or aloof or didn't really care about the kids. Mm -hmm. They hardly ever lifted a finger. How many times have I heard that? And yeah. so now they go in. They want fifty-fifty, sometimes more. And you're thinking, what? I, I mean, you, you, you don't know, you know, the doctor's names. You don't know where they're at. You've never. You don't know the to, children's names. You, you don't, don't know, know how the children's they, names. You don't know what they look like. <laughs> you wrote their birth date wrong on your, your <laughs> declaration in court. Like, come on. And the, the thing that they go to is, well, the reason that I don't have this relationship with my children is because you were gatekeeping, you were enmeshed, wow. you're too enmeshed with them, you're talking bad about me, it's your fault. I don't have a relationship with my kids. Here's wow. the problem, it's making a lot of headway. It's easier for a judge to go, yeah, 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 she's crazy, she, she's too uh, all over the kids, 50-50, than to dig in and pay attention and actually see that even if the kids come to court and say, I, I really do want to live with mom if they're the age. And, you know, I, he, I, we were at his house seven days or four days last week and he didn't come home for two of them, you know? Wow. Well, it's because mom's talking about, you know, it's, but these alienation claims are making headway and it's super scary. So there are a lot of movements right now. Um, Rita, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Um, there are a lot of movements now to correct this in our system and there's some awesome studies out and it, you know, we're going to, we're going to squash this. Yeah. When it comes to holding on to hope in child custody, mm -hmm. many have found that the reality is once they get to a certain age range, they usually, make up their mind because children at a young age truly start to understand who's telling the truth. 
yeah. it's just out of their power to do anything. Right. And what most children, I, I've talked, uh, had people on the show, and in show preps, uh, people have often mentioned they were that child. And one of the things many times that was expressed is as that child that knew the truth, but they couldn't do anything, what they didn't want was to have a parent that was bitter and hopeless that they returned to. And and I found that quite interesting. I actually have an upcoming show. Someone's going to come on and they're going to talk about it. That they, uh, understanding uh, uh, where Rita's coming from, one of the things that, that I appreciated was learning was that when someone was speaking that they were that child at one time, what they didn't want, they knew they weren't going to stay with their dad anymore, but they didn't want to return to their mom if their mom was going to be bitter and resentful and didn't take care of herself and be that positive force that they yeah. couldn't get from their narcissistic dad. Right. And I said, that's the most interesting twist. I never looked at it that way. Uh, and they're going to be coming on the show, this person. And they were, they were going to give their perspective that they had friends that went from one narcissistic parent to go with the innocent parent only to find out that the innocent parent was bitter. And just as it was, they, they had, it was like they had nowhere else to go. Right. That both right. homes were were shambles because one was still mad at the other and the other was still they were rather so they ran away right <laughs> they, ran, they literally ran away oh, they ran away and, and that and, is hard and to hear the story it's going to be coming i'm going to do a show with them but to hear their story is quite amazing because it's from their perspective yeah and now that they're older and uh, the, this uh, this person is older to hear their aspect of how they view it as an adult when they look back and they hear shows like this talking about this, they go like, nobody's like looking at the kid's perspective that they can't wait to get away from the bad parent, but they don't want to go with the innocent parent because all they do is talk about how horrible the other parent is. Yeah. And they didn't take care of themselves emotionally. They're not balanced. And, and so it's like, they don't yeah, want nothing to do with either one of them. That's not you know? okay either. And, and it no. is an extra uphill challenge. Yeah. I mean, there's always the rule, right? Don't talk bad about the other parent. That's just well, yeah, the golden rule. You just, you can't. And I think it's a little extra hard for those of us that have, are divorcing or have divorced a disordered individual, right? Yeah. Um, but you're right. You, you can't. And so, and in that case, that's really heartbreaking because like you said, she had two broken homes that she didn't feel safe yeah. or comfortable yeah. in. Um, and you do have to constantly remind yourself, I have to be that safe space. I have to be that, put the smile on when, you know, dad did something weird, but the kid's yep, excited yep, about it. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's really, really tough, but yeah, that is absolutely heartbreaking. She, she said that she mentioned later to her mom that it was troubling her, you know, and the mom took it to heart and, and changed and recognized. She just told her, I can't wow. live with you because it's just as bad being with you as it is with him. Mm. Because everything is his fault. And she, she just told her, I don't care whose fault it is. I right. just want to have a peaceful place to go to sleep in. And yeah. it's not with a, with a narcissistic dad. Yeah. I want to be with you, but I can't be with you because it's bad. Being. It was just an interesting show prep. And I went like, wow. Yeah. I wonder how many other children are in that position where they go like, I, I want to go be with mom or dad, but they're too little. They don't have the money. They don't have, you know what I mean? They Absolutely. They have no way out, but yeah. yet they're hearing these battles back and forth. Sure. It's just an interesting dynamic when you're dealing with, would you say a disordered person? I like yeah. the way you said that. I, I have all different, you yeah. know, I, I try to sort of veer That's away book. from always say book. narcissist or not right. I'm yeah, not a I get you. I, can't I totally so, get you. Yeah. And, and sometimes there are other yeah. things going on, as we know. So that's why yeah. we throw in high conflict, disordered, unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> I say knucklehead, troublemaker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bad behavior. Because, yeah. you know, we can throw we can throw narcissistic uh, person or narc abuse, whatever, uh, many times over. Yeah. The reality of it is when we're affected by these bad behavior, disordered individuals, uh, the children, yes, without a doubt, become the premier victims of such a situation. But sometimes the adults can can take on such a backpack of uh, look at me and woe is me to the point that they don't recognize that they're leaving the child out. And the child may need to see one parent who looks like they got their stuff together. 
yeah, and and rises above the moment. Uh, I, I want to ask you about this. As you feel comfortable, whichever way you want to talk about this, okay. financial abuse was something else uh, my audience wanted uh, someone to touch on. What has been your experience and what you've noticed when it comes to someone dealing with financial abuse when it comes to divorce and trying to navigate around that? You know, if possible, and I didn't do this just so everyone knows, <laughs> preparing for your divorce when, when there's a lot of financial abuse, if that's your ex's tick is yeah. ultra, super hyper-focused money, um, it's going to get worse. And so again, it's a, it's preparing Wait, for that. It's going to get worse. Oh, it's going to get worse. Wow. It's going to get worse. They were controlling with money in the marriage. Yeah. The second you file, then the post separation abuse kicks in and they cut you off. But wait, they're not supposed to. Is that there? Won't the court get mad? Well, yeah, eventually, but they don't care. They still cut you off. They, you know, hire a high powered lawyer and you have no money to pay for it. Well, doesn't right, right, he or right. she have to pay for mine too? Well, yes. When you finally get around to it, but for now today, he's not paying for his lawyer, your lawyer, he's paying for his high powered lawyer. Um, they, you know, just start moving money, but wait, they can't do that. We filed, right? No, you're right. They can't. And eventually you'll track it down, but right now they don't care. They're moving money. Um, yeah. And so they pull wow. all of those shenanigans. And so that's... it's just, again, it's being prepared. That's where you really have to have the right team. And I will tell people, if you don't have an attorney, I personally, I would say I like these three because I know that they dig deep in there. You know, they just have a lot of financial focus, you know, versus maybe I like these right, three right. because you're going to have a custody battle. So. And, and we're talking about. And if a person's they haven't been to work in a while, Jackie, we're, we're talking. This is bad. This is bad from what you're saying. If they're cutting an, a person off. And creating all these 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 money hurdles, and let's say this person's been a a caregiver, you know, she's been a homemaker, as as the expression goes, and now she has to go look for work. Or, I mean, all these other things come into play. She has to move in with other people. This is bad. Yeah, it's it can be very scary, but I just I want you to know. I can't totally take away the fear. Your attorney can't totally take away the fear, but you can come up. These guys aren't in reinventing the wheel. Okay. <laughs> I Eight love that. Billion of them before them came and did the same <laughs> thing. And they think they're so smart. Like this is like, Ooh, I'm going to make yeah. money. Like, so yeah. there are definitely like chess moves that you can make right away mm -hmm. legally. And like, okay. once you realize this is happening, you can do this, but it's, it's when you don't know and you're like, well, maybe he won't do it. Well, maybe, you know, and you don't already no. have a plan in place or you don't, yeah, sometimes right. I was so scared. I wouldn't even call my own, own attorney to deal with it because I was just in the fetal position. And so, but if I had somebody talk to that said, Jackie, get up, here's what we're going to do. I, you need to call your attorney today. Yeah. Let him or her know that this is happening. Like figure out like, how are you, how are you paying your rent next month? And You'll, you'll get into court, you'll get an order, you'll get a hearing, but so you can make a plan. They're going to pull this crap, but you can make a plan. So you were in a position where there was no one coaching you per, per se or no? No. You know what? I eventually sort of found someone It wasn't called coaching them, right? This is really just kind of blowing up now. This, this, right. the whole That's divorce true. That's true. Yeah. coaching right. side, mm -hmm. um, which I'm so glad for and specifically high conflict. They're getting more and more of us out there. But no, I found someone just to, and this is why I said, I, I, I think that they're so worth it. I was completely cut off financially. Neighbors were dropping groceries off on my doorstep. My teachers, school teachers were handing me $20 bills, which is why I said this earlier. Yeah, I was right. living in a multi-million dollar house, driving a mm -hmm. fancy car. And I, you know, was begging for groceries. So, but it only happened for a little while till we got to him, but he wanted this, you know, that's what he wanted to do. Oh yeah. And I was yeah. like, I'll be fine. I can handle it. I lived on top ramen in college for four years. I'm like, yeah. bring it, bring it, <laughs> bring it on. So, so. I like you, Jackie. <laughs> so, um, no, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Um, bring it on. That's all we got to remember. Bring it on. That's all you got to remember. <laughs> Hashtag bring it, bring it on. Bring it on. Jackie Miller. Jay Miller. 
that's, that, that's a t-shirt you should give every one of your clients. Okay. You sign up with me, you get a t-shirt, bring it on. And, and every time you go to court, every time you go to court, you put it on. No, just kidding. you don't want to do that. Don't go on a t-shirt. But else, what I was going to say, uh, oh, did I lose you for a second? Uh, let's see if we get you back. I got you back. I got I'm you sorry, back. That was my that's fault. That's no, no, that's the president of the United States calling you for some advice, probably. I don't know. You know what? It's a client blowing up my phone. <laughs> it, trust me. That's why I do the lives because my audience loves this kind of stuff. They love that impromptu. It yeah, it's yeah, a client yeah. blowing up my phone. So, so when it comes when it comes to filling in the gap when the chaos starts to happen, though, as you post separation stuff starts to take place, that can be scary. It can be seemingly overwhelming. It can go on for a period of time, almost like shock and awe to try to bring this person to their knees. But you're saying we got to kind of have that. We'll bring it on attitude. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like I said, I just keep reminding clients they're not reinventing the wheel. The right attorney's seen this a million times. We know how we'll move forward. We get all our decks in a row. We get all our information. We figure out who your judge is. We figure out what kind of person they are. We figure out, I mean, there's all kinds of things. We're going to profile your ex. We're going to figure, see if we can figure out their next move. Um, you know, and yeah. it's basically to make you feel like you have as much control as possible right. because that's and what they want you to feel, room. right? And, and yeah. to get some breathing room because a person can feel stifled. They can feel like they're losing their very breath, but, and then they still have to, children maybe to take care of. Um, yeah. They're still trying to find a way to feed themselves and get the basic necessities of life. Yes. If that person is cutting those things off. Yep. And you know what? You're going to get through it. I promise you. And when you're done, you're going to be so strong. <laughs> As my sis- sister, my friend said to me, you are forged by fire, Jackie. <laughs> like, <that's so> <laughs> They're going, you're going to be a Jackie disciple. <laughs> you will be a Millaret. <laughs> Jackie no Miller, Millaret. You, you will give tin to Jackie and you will be strong. Okay. Oh. So, um, <laughs> therefore, this is a very important post that you had. December 19th, 2020, when a negative thought enters your mind, think three positive ones. Train yourself to flip the script. How has that been helpful to you and your clients? You know, I am a huge believer in that because going back to when you feel like you have no control, there were so many times during my divorce, that was the only thing I could do. And literally, like we talked about earlier, my brain was like marinating in stress hormones and I couldn't think. And I think I can't live in this fear one more second. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to pass out. I mean, literally, it it, it was so overwhelming. And I would just start to visualize something more positive. What? Okay. What, Jackie, stop this. What do you want? Visualize when you're done. Imagine you and your kids sitting in a living room. It's your space. It's, it's, what are you wearing? How are you? And you try as hard as you can to manufacture that happy feeling Mm -hmm. and rescue yourself and your brain from the cycle. Um, Because there's so many moments, that's the only control you can have. And actually, I have this mental rescue kit on my blog that you can, when you go onto my website, it'll ask you if you want it. Um, You can exit out of it if you want. But, and that's really all it talks about. It's like, have, and I started to have these go to, um, visions basically. And, and I'll just tell you guys mine. Mine was standing in a white kitchen. I have these certain sweats that I love. I was getting coffee in the morning, feeling like I was in my own space. My kids were sitting on the couch and I would just call that to, to memory or, you know, and and visualize it anytime Mm -hmm. I was just suffering and just be like, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her one day just to rescue my brain. When it comes to rescuing our brain, that means that we have to find ways to stand our ground emotionally in a positive, safe space, even though we may emotionally be under attack and going through a situation that divorce can bring from a narcissist. We have to envision things that may help us make it. By you doing that, did you ever see yourself? Of course not. Sitting here talking with me today, that was the last thing on your mind. But did you ever see yourself being a divorce coach? You know, not really. 
I, I had a little trouble, honestly, here because I was in pharmaceuticals before I was, but I was a stay at home mom for 14, 15 years. I was, you know, so I started really just listening to every self-help podcast, every, I knew I had to go back to work and I thought I am just going to take advantage of this and really tap into my strengths and try my hardest to find something that really feels like I'm helping people, something I'm passionate about and something that fits my lifestyle. And you know, where I spent money was on a career coach and it was so worth it because I went to her and said, you know, I just had this idea for a podcast. I know it doesn't make money, but I love speaking to people. I love talking about this subject. I have to help people and get this information out. And I said, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I'm like, what am I doing starting a podcast? What the hell am I? Who am I? And so she's like, it's awesome. She did all her personality tests and strengths finders and all this stuff. And she said, you know, you're right. <laughs> you should start this. And then as we started talking through it, she said, and I'm thinking you also need to become a coach. So what about divorce coach? And I was like, that's a thing. So here I had had someone help me a little bit. This is what I was talking about earlier back in the day. I was at the end of my divorce. You're the best, like, Jackie. I was great. Sorry, you're, great. This you're is the a best. thing. And yeah. I didn't even know. That's it. a thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it was really great because I called my mentor and she said, I'm so happy you're doing this. I'm starting a specific high conflict certification. And I'm like, oh my God, let's do it. Sign me up. So I did a regular certification. I did a high conflict certification. I was forged by fire. And I said, here I am I'm helping people. You know, the only thing left is for you to start a program called the Ninja High Conflict Divorce. You, this, this, yes, this whole thing, would, you're almost like a ninja and you take all the ninja moves and, and, and use them as an analogy for the moves you make in divorce. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just making this up. Don't mind me. I have, <laughs> I have weird marketing ideas that pop in my head. Anyhow, listen, uh, I, I've got to do this. And here we go. Uh, we have been talking now 37 going on I'm 38 just minutes. Say, I'm going to have to go pretty soon. Yes. Before and that, my phone dies. Yeah, from the Yes. Because <laughs> the, the 92, the 90, 90 percent, whatever we had when we first got started that we talked about. We, I said, no, a piece of cake. I'm not going to talk that long. So here we go. Round Robin real quick. Here we go. Uh, first. Say whatever pops into your head when I say these uh, different words and phrases that come directly from the J. Miller Coach page, oh, okay. uh, Instagram page. Uh, so here we go. First word, stalking. Oh, stalking. It happens after you leave your ex almost every time. All right. It happens after you leave your ex almost every time. Are you ready? Next one. Next one, narcissistic meltdown. Mm. What I would, comes I would to mind? Say when you, uh, I see, I keep talking so I can buy you time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, narcissistic. I, I would say when you've had some sort of little win, and then they go basically narcissistic rage. They just okay. let unleash. Unleash. Okay, and the one that I really wanted to ask you about, and I want you to speak f freely from your heart. Okay. By the way, today's show is a California connection because these uh, we're two people from California, right? Yeah, you're in yes. California, right? Yeah. So I don't get to have that often, so I'm kind of happy when I get a Cali in here. So all right, all right. Uh, now that I did all that to kind of buy you some time to get ready for what I'm about to say, all right, I'm, I'm going ready. to say someone's name, and I want you to just say exactly what you think about this person and their situation. Britney Spears. Oh. Um totally coercive control been under the control of her dad yep how does a person deal with coercive control it's a doozy i will say we are finally having some laws passed that are recognizing yeah. it we just have to figure out how to prove it but it's yeah. it's a thing and don't yeah. get me started even the irs knows there's That's there are forms you can fill out for taxes but it, yeah 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 it it's uh it's, it's, it's why it's why you didn't leave. Thing. If you're out there and you're married, been married forever, and you're wondering why you didn't leave it, that's why you didn't leave. Yeah, coercive control is is uh is it's it's not it's bad. It's, yeah. it's very insidious. Yep. Uh, a lot of people are exposed to it and they don't know it. Uh, but uh, when it comes to protecting ourselves emotionally uh, during a divorce and financially, and, and holding on to our mindset and our and our space and and who we are. Uh, you are somebody that I implore all of you who will see this uh, later 
uh, I know who you are because you're asking for a show like this. Um, Jackie is the person to see. Jackie, do you do consultations with people or not? Absolutely. You can go on my website and on the one-on-one coaching tab, you can, um, so you can sign up. You can get my contact info on me on there too and, and email me or, or even text me. But you can just pick a slot for a 30-minute uh, free consultation and we'll figure out if you think coaching is right for you. And hey, speaking of presentation we talked about earlier, I just yeah. yesterday yeah. put on the shop page a new um, online program that I have about, it's called your truth statement. And it's about okay. constructing your power or truth statement. That's going to help you get through all those custody evaluations and present yourself in the best light possible. So, okay. So too. please go to Jackie's website, make sure you talk to her soon because we're expecting at some point her phone to go dead. So we're going to need to go, but <laughs> I'm going to segue. I'm going to rather uh, pull in uh, Rita, Rita underscore ARB, who was talking earlier. Uh, it might be to your advantage to uh, go to uh, Jackie's page and take a look at the consultation uh, image. Again, keep yourself calm. <laughs> okay. Calm, uh, lady. I like that. That's nice, Rita. Keep yourself calm and be a lady. I agree with you a thousand percent. And then take your earrings and shoes off and scream into a pillow. Uh, but whatever you do, get one of Jackie's cups. Notice that cup she's got right there. <laughs> I'll, plug, oh I'll, plug any, I'll plug anything for my game. Uh, <laughs> okay, but uh, Jackie's going to Jackie's gonna go for now, everybody. Uh, Jackie, so give us some. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, any last words? Rita, make sure you reach out to Jackie. She has a yes. consultation. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe Jackie's the coach for you. Uh, but try the consultation out 30 minutes uh, for free. Jackie, last words for everybody to keep in mind before you go. Oh, I just, you know what? Get the help. Surround yourself with the best team possible. Ask for help from friends, from the right team. Just do it. Invest in your defense and your offense, okay? For your future and for your team. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, you guys. This is fun. You were awesome. You were awesome. Thank you for, for letting me torture you and do this. Uh, Jackie, you take care of yourself, everybody. Love you guys. See you Thank later. You so Tons much. of hearts going okay. across the screen. Bye, Bye for now. Bye. Won't you let it go? Well, I know for a lot of on my clients that come in, um, you know, who don't know they're in a narcissistic relationship, right. they are. They are usually experiencing experiencing some depression or anxiety or both. You know, they feel like they're the crazy one, often question their own memory and their own judgment um, and things like that. So if, you, if you're starting to see any of that within yourself, that could be a sign that some of this is going on. Um, you know, if you're not in therapy or in a support group, I just start journaling. Just, I mean, just that one small step of writing down these interactions look at it on paper i mean that it can start to because a lot of times we question our memory when we're in these relationships because there's so much gaslighting going on which is when the narcissist will try to change details or twist things around so it makes you question your own judgment or how you remember things and and so like just begin to almost document you know what happens how you feel about it have an outlet to process those feelings um that can be a good way to begin to get to some clarity about what's happening